you want to make a modded Minecraft server. We're going to be making a Fabric server in this video. If you want to make a Forge server or a Neo Forge server, completely different process, but both are linked in the description down below. So it's not that you found the wrong guide completely, it's just that you need to go to the description down below to find your Forge and Neo Forge server guides. Nonetheless, we're going to be getting Fabric, and the first thing you're going to want to do is go to the second link down below to go here. This is where you can download the Fabric installer from our website. Just click Download Fabric here to go to the official download page. Think like just this big blue download for Windows button. You need to keep or save this file. And when you're downloading Fabric, I do want to mention that the server that we're making here is only going to be up when your computer is up and running. So it's going to take quite a bit of resources. You're going to need a good computer because modern Minecraft is very resource intensive. On top of that, it's hosted on your own internet connection as well. So not only do you need a good internet connection, you also need to only give this out to your friends, family, people you trust, because anyone who gets the access to this server can do a thing called DDoS you, which is hit your internet offline, as well as figure out where you lived under your latitude and longitude coordinates. But don't worry. If you don't want to have to worry about any of that, you just want to make a server and have it work with high quality hardware, Ryzen CPUs, amazing performance, go check out our hosting company, Simple Game Hosting, at the first link in the description down below. You can easily start a Fabric, NeoForge, or Forge server, any modded server you want, or if you're looking for a specific mod pack, there's one click installation of hundreds of mod packs. You can add mods to your server in just a few clicks and truly customize your server any way that you want. Plus, there's expert live chat support there, so let's say you add a mod to your server, you try to start it, and it just doesn't work. Well, there is support there to help you out and fix that issue for you. So go check out Simple Game Hosting, first link in the description down below. The breakdown, .xyz slash simple to start your Minecraft server the simple way. Nonetheless, Fabric is downloaded. We're going to go ahead and minimize our browser. We want to make a new folder here on our desktop. We're going to name this Fabric 1.21.9 server. And then we want to go to that Fabric installer in our downloads folder and double click on it. Now we're going to install this twice because anyone who joins your server, including yourself, needs Fabric installed locally on their computer. That's done using this installer by clicking on client here, making sure it's set to 1.21.9 and clicking install. Now that's done. Now we can do the server part of it. So just go ahead and click on server here at the top and then we want to click on the three dots here next to this launcher location navigate to your desktop and find that folder you created right here. Go ahead and click open and now you can go ahead and click install. You're not done, you need to click download server jar. You're still not done, you need to click this generate button and then once you've clicked all of that, click done and close out of the fabric installer. You can actually even delete it because you don't need it anymore. Now we can open up our fabric server folder here and it's got everything in it. All we've got to do is double click on this start.bat file and the server should attempt to start, but it's going to fail. And the reason for that is we need to agree to the EULA once it's generated. You can see it's generating here in the background. However, what if that didn't work? What if you, what if you double clicked on that? It just didn't work here. It didn't open this. Well, that's because you need Java. You need Java 21 specifically, which is linked in the description down below with a complete guide that goes over exactly how to get it in text and video format. We've also got the jar fix, and this will link the jar files on your computer, like the server files you just downloaded, to Java after you've got it. With that being said, we can go ahead and minimize our browser, and we have this eula.txt file. Open that up, and we want to change EULA equals false to EULA equals true, T-R-U-E, exactly like that. Click File and Save, and now when you double-click that start.bat file, your server is going to start. Now, there's no mods on it, it's not customized in any way, but you have a modded server set up now. However, what if we do want to add some mods? Well, first, with the server live over here, I would recommend typing here at the bottom, OP space and then your username. That's going to give you op on the server and allow you to use different commands on it. Then I'd recommend stopping the server by typing stop right like so to make sure everything saves and then press any key to close out of that. Now we can start customizing it. And before we even add any mods, it's worth taking a look at the server.properties here. This is where you can customize a lot of stuff, like your difficulty, your game mode. You can make it a hardcore server. And of course, even change things like your view distance to be able to see farther on the server. Now, with that being said, how do we add mods? Because, well, this is a modded server after all. Well, you need to download some. Modrinth and CurseForge are the most popular places to do that. So we're going to go ahead and download some Fabric mods for 1.21.9. Now, not a ton of mods are out right now. The version just came out. So we're going to go ahead and grab Waystones. And I like getting Waystones because if we go to Files here, we can download this 1.21.9 Fabric version. But that's not all we need. 
So once this downloads, let's go back to the mod because if we click on it, we can see we also need under related projects, Bomb and the Fabric API. If we tried to download these without this, it wouldn't work. We would just install the mod and it wouldn't work and we'd wonder why. So we can go ahead and download both of these as well. You'll often need the Fabric API with the Fabric server. So I would always recommend grabbing the Fabric API and just installing it. It's not gonna hurt anything. It's only going to help. So grab that no matter what. And then Bomb is required for this specific mod. So we'll go ahead and grab that for Fabric, making sure we're getting the Fabric version. Now with our mods downloaded, installing them is pretty easy. Easy. You actually just are going to take and once they're done downloading, move them into your server folder under your mods tab. So we have this mods tab here. This is where we want to move our mods. So if we open that up, we can move our mods from our desktop right into this mods folder. However, you won't be able to join the server if you just add them to the mods folder here. So we want to go ahead, select all of these, and then click this copy button right up here at the top or just right click after you've selected them all and select copy. Now go ahead and open up Minecraft itself because while the mods are on the server, you and anyone who joins this server, including your friends, needs the mods installed locally as well. So we can do that by going to the Minecraft launcher here, going to installations. We've got that fabric loader installation. Hover over it, click the folder icon that appears, and then find your mods folder. Go ahead and right click and paste in here these files and now we will be able to join the server. So let's go ahead, click play, click play again, and we can join our modded server. We do wanna make sure that we start the server though by double clicking that start.bat file in addition to launching Minecraft. Now at this point, you're actually the only person that can join your server. We're gonna show you quickly where to go to get your friends to join, but right now you're the only person and this is the wrong uh, screen size. Give me a second. A little bit of movie magic and things are a lot more visible. We can go to multiplayer and we have this local server. We can go ahead and actually delete that because we're gonna create that again. So go ahead and add a server here and then I'm gonna name this local connection because this is a local connection only you can use. And with the server address, we're gonna do local host. All one word, exactly like that. And again, you're the only person who can join using this IP. Click done, it will resolve the server and we can double click to join right on in. We'll see us join in on the left hand side, Nick's games there. Now, once we're in game, we could probably test waystones by placing one down, but something fun that we can actually do is find one in a village really quick. So again, using a bit of movie magic, we have found a waystone, we can activate it. I only found one, but the system is here, it is working and we are good to go. However, your friends can't join. I mentioned that. How do they join? Because you probably want to play on your server with your friends. Well, in order for them to join, you're going to need to port forward. We have an in-depth guide in the description that covers every single step of port forwarding super in-depth in the way that we do tutorials. Making sure that when you have the tutorial finished, you have your friends online, troubleshooting along the way, all of that stuff. Go check this guide out to get your friends on your server because at this point, your server is ready for them to join it after you port forwarded. If you've got any questions, let us know in the comment section down below. But give the video a thumbs up if it did help you out. And we will see you in the next one. I am out. Peace.